we just talk? Can we just talk? talk about Shop day back here on Monday. Been cleaning things up today. Uh, all of Alex's parts for the 540 I took out there and put in his car. I just needed some shelf space. There's stuff everywhere. So it's kind of cleaned up. These are engine parts from Tyag. I don't know if these have any value or not. Uh, the crankshaft certainly doesn't, but it's a cool thing that I'll figure out how to make even cooler later. Timing chain and all of the hardware that holds together an S62 are in there. Probably just scrap metal at this point. Then I have these velocity stacks that are completely unharmed. I don't know if they have any value. I've got to research that. And I've had a solenoid board that I, again, don't know if it has any value. Uh, obviously, if it works, it does. I just need to figure out if I can test it to see if it works. And then we've talked about the heads. Let's get an update on Nate's engine. I was not able to make it up here this weekend to see him. He was kind of sick, not feeling real well, not as productive as usual, but he still managed to get some stuff done. So the Valley is put together a lot better. Um, since you guys have seen this engine, holy cow, it's got heads on it now. Powder coated in crinkle black, I think he called it. They went over these stripes too. I think he's going to sand that down to make them metal colored again. Um, so Central Valley's put together, the throttle motor's on here, the ITBs are on here, and this has all been cleaned up, looks really nice. Uh, fuel injectors still need to go, I see the eight holes for those. Um, what else, the dipstick is in, and the dipstick tube. This hose, I imagine, goes on to the lower plenum, along with that hose and this hose. Um, there's an alternator in place now, and the pulleys. No power steering pump yet. That's going to go there. Those pulleys might need to be replaced at some point. Uh, thermostat housing's on there. I imagine the thermostat's inside. The fan clutch is going to go here on the new water pump. Um, he's replaced, I think it was the other side, but some of these studs had sheared off. It's got new studs in there. Um, I see some new exhaust gaskets, and the nuts are even threaded on there to hold those in place. These are the ones that were replaced. And then he said the next thing he was going to work on is the driver's side engine mount that goes here. And then the oil filter housing kind of thing attaches to that too. I see the um, solenoids are in there. A lot of progress. It looks like an engine now. It looks really big. It looks heavy. We've even got um, it's not a Freon line. Yeah, into the AC compressor. So cool. Or refrigerant, not Freon. There's a lot less parts on the table, which is a good sign. Um, there's the part I was just telling you about there, and the oil filter housing is here. I see a starter motor, power steering pump. Um, there's the injectors wiring harness. That's the old front timing cover with the chunk missing out of it. And that's about all I know today. It is hot. I am going to head back here shortly. Um, Shane came down today. We looked at his Dynan M5 2001. Really nice car. Doesn't need much. Needs like rear sway bar links and some other minor stuff. Diff seals. Nothing huge. So. Talk to you on the road. And look at that, there's no more parts on the tool cart. So I cut some more of this black foam stuff and put that in there. So we've got a nice, clean, neat tool cart ready to be used for its full potential. It's wash day here at the house. I guess they've already been washed, now they're in the dryer. Productive. So I said I'd talk to you on the way home, that didn't happen. Uh, it was a really nice, relaxing drive home. Somehow at 5.30 on a weekday there wasn't traffic. I left the windows down, we had cruise control and some reggae going, it was nice. Uh, I got back and we've kind of had to deal with a problem we've had here at the house for, two problems we've had here at the house for a couple days. Number one is we've got no TP, and that's only a problem that can last for a couple, uh, not very long. So I went to the store tonight with Megan, we took care of that. Problem number one, which we did first, I'm out of order here, I'll show you. It's a mess, it's my dad's fault, he managed to not close the freezer somehow and everything frosted over. So now we're stuck having to do this and leave everything open and let it defrost and dry out. We've taken everything out. This is the stuff that can sit outside and we don't have to worry about, you know, no milk and eggs and butter and that sort of stuff. Uh, so all this stuff is gonna spend the night out here on the counter. The rest of it is at the neighbor's house and their refrigerator. And she's very kind for letting us do that. But we took all the shelves out and the drawers out and cleaned everything and it was kind of grubby. This fridge is only a couple years old, um, but now it's spotless. looks absolutely new. And uh, the tracks on the door had iced over and the door wasn't opening very well. So now all that's put back together and clean and dry. So we'll put it back together tomorrow. Uh, wrapping up the rest of the day though, 
I got tired of seeing those seats sitting in there. I've had, there's no demand for front driver's seats um, for an M5. So I just put it on the owner's group and two other Facebook groups. And I said a hundred bucks a seat, 200 for a pair, local pickup only, come get them. And finally, that's what it takes to drum up some interest. Now I thought seats were gonna be worth way more than that. I had it built into my cost analysis, profit analysis spreadsheet that I was gonna get many times more than $100 for front seats, especially with all working motors. The controls are in nice shape. The little panels are, are good. Um, they aren't cosmetically perfect. They're probably like a six or a seven out of 10 at best cosmetically. The one set's really dry and has a busted stitch. The leather itself isn't torn, but the stitch is broken. Then the other set is softer, but cracked and kind of just worn. And that's the way it is. They're hundred and some thousand mile, 15, 20 year old cars. So a hundred bucks, I still think is an absolute steal for them. And I've drummed up some interest and now it's the idea of, well, one guy texted me and asked me for pictures, further detailed pictures of uh, like the buttons on the side. I said, okay, I can get those tomorrow. And then I get another guy that's like, hey, can I come get them tomorrow? I said, yeah, but then I gotta go back to the first guy and be like, hey, I got a guy with cash. Do you want these things? And then he gets mad and he's like, I thought I had dibs. We don't have dibs, you asked me for more pictures. It's the first person that has cash gets the sale. That's the way it works. You pay for it, you get it. You don't just ask me questions and then string me on for two months and then be like, ah, I've decided to go another way, thanks. And meanwhile, I've turned down six other people with money. It doesn't work that way. But unfortunately, then you get people mad at you for wanting to do business like that. It's the way it is. Uh, so anyways, we already sold one. The guy's gonna pick it up next Sunday. I've got three more. Might have two sold, might not. Don't know, see you tomorrow. Um, Megan's here tonight. I had leftover pizza yet again. She had dinner downtown, spending the night here since she works up in Carmel Valley tomorrow. So I'm going to go to bed. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow on Tuesday. Good night.